I'm going to talk to you today about how I made a video called Who is Terra? If you haven't watched the video yet, you should definitely go watch it because this obviously won't make any sense. So please click here or look in the description below for a link to it. But also, if you want to find out how I turned that video into an interactive experience for a Raspberry Pi Creative Technologies exhibition, then click here because it was used for, for that and that was awesome. So first of all, I wanted to create the world of terror. I'd already written the poem and I already had an idea of what I wanted the audience to feel from this video. Basically, I wanted to bring people back to the fears that they felt when they were kids and they were scared of little monsters under the bed and things like that. So what I wanted to do was turn it into a kid's storybook. And originally that's what it was gonna be. It was going to be a physical kid's storybook. Who knows, in the future I could still do that. But I wanted to make it a video because that's my thing. I like making videos. So what I thought of doing was creating a world of terror through designing it like an illustrated children's book and then projecting it onto myself as if I was within the book. And it turned out pretty good. So let me let me tell you how I did that. Because it was so fun. It was so fun. So how did I create the world of terror? So first of all, I drew him by hand. I really like drawing with pencil to start off with. Sometimes I think it's the mistakes that you make that make the drawing amazing. And Command Z, Control Z, whatever you use, it's too easy. It's right there. And you just want to if you make a mistake. And I just think roll with it. You never know what you're going to come out with. Also, I love the scratchy kind of messy look that comes with when you're quickly sketching something. So I think it worked really well for the look and feel of what I wanted. Rushed, kind of like the Babadook style. Babadook, yeah, Babadook style. So once I did this, I scanned it or simply took a picture. You don't need to scan it if you don't have a scanner. And then put it into Photoshop, made it so that the contrast was up, the saturation was down, so you didn't get all that yellowy paper colour and I simply kind of layered these on top of each other for the desired effect that I wanted and I used different layers to colour it the way that I wanted, added some shading but because I still had my original sketches it still had all the kind of scratchy marks and everything that I made through the drawings which I really liked, I liked that. For the scene behind it, I did that all digitally. It was supposed to kind of blend in with the background, look a bit messy, maybe like it had been painted. And I think that worked pretty well. I did this live streamed over on my Yagma X channel. I think I drew for about three or four hours live streaming to you guys and that was super, super fun. So I made about four different scenes that I wanted to use for the projection of the filming. And when I filmed, I actually didn't export these as images and then project them. Instead, I simply made Photoshop full screen and kept them all different layers. By doing this, I could keep something selected and then have one of my friends use the keyboard to move it around as I moved. So it was basically like I was animating but I wasn't. So I was cheating animation. It was great. It was good. It worked so well as well because I managed to set it all up so that the projector was quite far away from the wall. It was projecting over pretty much the whole wall and I could act as if I was within the scenes that I had created. It was so, so much fun. <laughs> Now when you project an image, sometimes it doesn't come out all that well on camera. You might get these weird lines, especially if the projection is massive. So the way that I got about this was to change the frame rate from 25 frames per second to 24. The trick was not to let too much light in. Even though the bars were still there in some shots, it made it look more old style, like an old kind of cable TV. And that would help for people, say my age or a bit older, to feel more nostalgic and help them feel the emotions that they felt when they were younger with the fear of monsters being under the bed and stuff. So I just thought, you know what, I quite like this. And I wanted to make the video look very old fashioned. I'm wearing an old fashioned dress. Sometimes it's black and white. Sometimes it's a bit more saturated. I really like that style of video. It worked out pretty well for me. I was happy with it. Another thing that I did when I was creating the video was I projected my scenes around the physical house itself. 
For this I used pretty much the same tactics as what I used when I was in the projection. I would move little bits around to make sure that it all was in the correct positions. Also one thing that I liked to do was I would brighten up an area if I knew that the object was going to be there and I didn't want all the illustrations to kind of overlay the object and I did that for me. For the me shots I was usually put a little halo of white so it looked like a spotlight. Actually it was just the colour white and it looked like a spotlight. I did the same thing, I put it in the middle of my scenes, I made the clouds move using separate layers. I really wanted to have a shot of me reading the book within the window of the house so it was as if I was actually a physical being in the house. So what I did for this was I projected the scene of the street around the house, took a picture of it with the camera for reference, and then put that image within my video editor as the reference. And then I simply overlaid the video of me reading on top of that image and put it to where I wanted myself to be within the window of the house. And then I exported that video and projected the video onto the house. So then the video not only had the image of the street around it, it also had me reading the book within the window and it actually worked really well. I wasn't sure whether it was going to work, it was kind of like maybe this will work. I got things to line up pretty well and yeah it turned out to be pretty good. Anyway that was how I did the creation and all the design and the projection filming for my Who Is Terror video. I really hope you liked this, I hope it was quite informative or if not just you know interesting in the least. Don't forget to check out the video if you haven't. If you haven't, thanks for watching this anyway, because you probably have no idea what I'm talking about. And if you want to find out how I turn this into an interactive video, then please click here. Have a lovely day or evening. Bye! In a dim, dark street of a dim, dark city. In a dim, dark house of that dim, dark street. In a dim dark bedroom of that dim dark house.